Hello, this is Ray Oxenin again. I'm now doing a representation of the altar of Wiesenheim. Uh, and here in the picture that you're looking at is shown uh, the Museum Unterlinden exhibition of the altar in Colmar in Alsace in France. Many people coming to the first opening are put off and shocked by the way and of the way Christ is shown on this cross. He looks as if he was ill and the details show that he has been uh, deceased with the ergot disease, the reason for the existence of the 370 hospitals that uh, the Antonite monk order <coughs> had in the 15-1600 in Europe. Uh, Jesus has marks on his skin and disfigured limbs. The altar was particularly commissioned by the Antonites for those who were brought to the altar with exactly this disease the ergot disease that came from the wheat and this can also be seen in the predella the same disfigured skin and limbs of Christ predella is the, 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 the part of the altar under the main picture now we go to the second picture and what you're seeing here is the same scene uh, from a different angle uh, it is engraved at the back of the Isenheim altar the following words this art comes of God's grace if God does not favor it it is of no use the one who praises God's work gets to know God Therefore, who does not understand it has nothing to judge at all. Is not many people know that this is engraved at the back of the first scene of the altar. There are three important sources for the Isenheim altar. First of all, of course, God and his word, Jesus Christ. Second, the Antonites. Uh, of them also more later and the third Matis Gotthard Nithard who also used the name Matis Gotthard God's power who was Grunewald well he has a connection with Matis Gotthard Nithard because uh, he, the name has been given to him Grunewald 147 years after his death and you can imagine his amazement perhaps even disappointment even rage if he came to the Museum Unterlinden in Colmar and saw his work displayed under the name of a painter called Grunewald the who was then Grunewald the does not exist uh, ex exists a lot of information on the person there's no self-portrait which is quite interesting also to notice uh, in a very creative way in Finnish there is more than in any other language in April a couple of years ago I came across a book by Hanno Becker Björkman a famous Finnish actor a very good one too I fully recommend this book. Its name in Finnish is Kadonet Askelet, Lost Steps or uh, Lost Footprints. His book led me further to a Finnish writer, Paavo Rintala, already deceased. His book was called, is called, Mina Grunewald I Grunewald 
tells the story of Grunewald, of whom we know very little of, as I've said. However, both writers tell the story in a fascinating, creative and imaginary way. To really get to know the altar, we have to let it happen in us. But I try to explain with words with what I mean. Um, Angelus Silesius, who lived 1600 something after the birth of Christ, he has very interesting sayings in a beautiful book that I've lost, um, where he says, if Christ were born in Bethlehem a thousand times and not in thee thyself, then art thou lost eternally. Okay, the altar was meant to help the persons who had ergot, the Saint Anthony's fire, which was often a deadly disease. All those people who had the Anthony's fire or ergot we're all facing death. When I was preparing this lecture originally a couple of years ago, an American woman got in touch with me and told her story. She had a near-death experience in 2003, which changed her life, and all the contents of the New Testament changed for her since that experience. The events were happening inside her. They were certainly not in the past. They were not in the future. Then they were in the present moment. She wrote, So many changes happened in my life since my near-death experience. I would never have dreamed so much would fall away and I would be where I am today in all things. It has not been a party or a fun activity. But I could not trade whatever happened because it was time for my soul to expand. The Sabbath, the birth of Christ, John the Baptist, etc. was all taking place in me, not outside not in the future, not in the past, but in the present. Two months later she added the following. I deal with airless Dunlos, which can involve many complexities of the body, a weaker heart, lack of circulation, fainting, bones that slide, shift and sublux, tissues that are more loose and thin, organs that don't work as well. In other words, a fairly similar condition to what the people who had the ergot were experiencing. There are stories of people who were coming to the altar, a woman who on the way dropped one of her arms, or somebody dropped the leg from knee downwards and so on. Really horrible stories. But let's go to the New Testament and John 3, 1 to 3 says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The, the altar of Isenheim tells this story of transformation and uh, we'll be going through these different things but let's first go more into the Anthonites what they were 
when and what happened. Here's a photo of the relics of Saint Anthony. The reason for the name Anthonite was these relics of Anthony the Great, who lived to the age of 105. He died in 356 after the birth of Christ. His relics were discovered in the year 561, so quite a long time afterwards, but uh, relics are normally discovered quite a long time afterwards. In the 10th century, they were given as a gift to a French count, a French count Jocelyn, which explains how they ended up in Saint Antoine le Bay. Saint Antoine le Bay was the main centre of the Antonites in France. Um, the, here is a bigger picture of it. The order Saint Anton le Abai, the Saint Anton, the Antonite order was started in 1095 after the birth of Christ by lay women and men. It's interesting there were lay women and men and the women of course they were also part of the organization when it became a monastic order in the Catholic Church. Uh, but we're not we don't have information about the women who did their work. Uh, they moved then into a Benedictine monastery which was built in uh, 1297. They had difficulties with the Catholic order, the Bene Benedictines, and later the monastery was given altogether to the Antonites. And here this picture the, this is how the monastery looks today. It's a very interesting place to visit. I can recommend to all uh, for inspiration. Here it is on the map. You see Saint Anton le Abai in Isère, France. It's situated right here. Uh, west from Grenoble, southeast from Lyon, and you can see on the map here, Genève is on the right upper corner. So when we went to see these places, we had a nice drive through the French countryside on the motorway. Uh, Unfortunately, I had a ticket on this way and it became quite expensive, but that's just uh, a byway. Now, the next photo is from inside the church, which here in this structure are the relics. And you can see the emblem of the Antonite order, the Tau sign Tau Cross also known as Saint Anthony's Cross and the, the, the church is really impressive it, it has such an atmosphere you know something you can cut with a knife it, it, it made a big impression on us when we were there with my partner Agnes Hilvig Here's a picture that uh, we made of the facade as it is looking today. Inside there is also Pieta, impressive Pieta sculpture with Pieta is uh, with uh, Mother of God and Jesus holding him after the crucifixion. Going further on the Antonite, the emblem from the hospital in Höchst, Germany, with the Tau Cross, as you see, 1695. And there is a peculiarity of 
the Anthony, Saint Anthony speaks running in the villages and towns with an emblem of the Anthonites in, in, in Hertz here on the left. Pigs that were allowed to go around the villages and towns with a clock around their necks for easy recognition. In Denmark there are 5 million people and 50 million pigs. Denmark is perhaps the only Nordic country that actually had an Antonite hospital in Schleswig. Uh, and as a remnant from this time and I've lived in, De in Denmark for 15 years I got to know of a brand name from 1976 uh, for special pigs the Antonius Kreese the A Saint Anthony pigs which are a special breed of pigs that give you better meat than the others. So there's the influence of St. Anthony for Denmark in our time. In England, St. Anthony's pigs were called Tantony pigs. T-A-N-T-O-N-Y. Tantony pigs. They were slaughtered in the feast day of St. Anthony on the 17th of January every year. And here's a map of the hospitals. They're not all here because there were 370 hospitals uh, and hospices. Most of the um, monasteries connected with uh, St. Anthony and the Antonites were on the route to Santiago de Compostela and they were used for as well for hospices for the pilgrims. Around 1500 there were some 370 hospitals. The last hospital was established in 1512 in Lennevarden, now called Lilverde, in Lettland. In this particular map you can see about 100 hospitals so there have been nearly four times more of them. But the important place is of course St. Anton Le Bay here marked in the southern part in the quite big letters and Memmingen. Memmingen has got a museum today of the Antonites and it, it, it is well worth visiting. Uh, I've been there about 10 years ago uh, and uh, they, are, they have many things that the Antonites were doing for the sick people who they were tending and nursing. Yeah, ergot. There you see the wheat and the ergot which is growing on the wheat is a fungus on rye and less less commonly on other grasses just as wheat or oats so it's mainly on rye ergotamine is one of the building blocks of the psychoactive drug lysergic acid dietulamide LSD. Ergot alkaloids are being exploited for medical purposes today, including the treatment of migraines, the induction of childbirth, and the control of postpartum bleeding. Ergot poisoning in humans, human, in humans and domestic animals is known as ergotism. This disease may cause strange hallucinations. The feeling of itchy and burning skin, gangrene, loss of hands and feet, and even death. Ergotism is one of the oldest known human diseases caused by mutotoxins. <laughs> 